Hey guys, Jake Brown here for rotocurve.com and today, as every week, we're going to be going through the underpriced plays for NFL DFS on some of the smaller sites in the industry. Right, we're going to kick it off with Fantasy Aces today. And like I did last week, and I, I think is the probably the better way to do things, I'll look, look for your feedback on that, but I will uh, fill out an entire roster on each of these sites filled with players who I think are slightly underpriced uh, or very underpriced. And many times it will add up to being a roster with tons of salary left over. Uh, and my idea is that you can look at that and kind of find some building blocks to then play the more popular or higher price plays you like. Um, just so happens on, on Fantasy Aces this week that it, it ended up becoming what, what looks like a typical lineup. Now, keep in mind, none of these uh, rosters that I've created are utilizing the advantages of roster creation and correlations uh, and, and game totals or things like that to so plugging these in it would be very much at your own risk and are not intended to be used um, directly, but the players in them possibly are. So let's start with Fantasy Aces quarterbacks. Uh, if you look here on the left, let's see the price of the top tier quarterback is significantly more 7574 than the next tier quarterback, um, which is again a drop off here. Uh, and you get a, a pretty big discount and don't really start seeing a lot of quarterbacks in the same range until you get down to Phillip Rivers. Uh, and then from Phillip Rivers through Matthew Stafford is 300 bucks, which is, you know, as that differentiates, that's the same that differentiates one from three. And you have a whole range of quarterbacks. So that's the range I'm looking in a little bit. And I actually really like the first, every single name in that range minus Matthew Stafford. But for our purposes, I've thrown in Cam Newton. I had Carson Palmer, um, both in positive matchups. Cars, uh, Cam Newton will be on the road. But again, uh, and you know, with with Tyrod Taylor only being you know two units or a hundred dollars less than Cam Newton, um, it's hard for me to justify playing playing any of these names underneath Palmer and Newton. Certainly over Newton, maybe maybe you can find some reason to look over Palmer, but there, there will definitely be opportunities in other sites I've taken some of these QBs. Um, but I think these guys really are the cream of, of the crop in this price range, and it happens to be a price range that you can't get much of a discount from. Uh, the, the rando quarterbacks out there, I mean, I guess you can play your Blake Bortles or your you know joke of an NFL quarterback and Colin Kaepernick for, for the same discount down from... Um, Cam Newton and Carson Palmer that you would get from going down from Rodgers and Luck. I just think that's a bigger drop down, so I, I won't be venturing too low there. Running back, I mean, you'll see Carlos Williams, I believe, in probably all four of these sites. I might have kept them out on a site. I think I did, actually. But, you know, the fact is, LaShawn McCoy is doubtful to play. Carlos has been dominating, as well as the fact that, you know, when, when McCoy was out there and trying, he was still performing better. So it's both a touches and a performance thing. Um, but again, his, his price tag isn't reflecting his role. So everywhere he's pretty much going to be an automatic play. Um, Latavius Murray is an interesting one. Uh, very much known within the industry. And uh, depending on what you thought of the ownership percentages last week, you either thought that more of the public was up on him or not enough people were listening. Um, the fact is he should be priced like one of the top running backs, and he is. This week he's actually priced three, well, include Arian Foster, six. So he's tied for seventh um, in terms of pricings of running backs. And But he's tied with, you know, Jeremy Hill and Joseph Randall, who I believe he's higher than on every single other site. He's $100 more than Devonta Freeman or than DeMarco Murray, who, again, he's better than, and I wish DeMarco would just turn into overnight for – my rooting interests, but uh, it's it's a usage rate thing with Latavius Murray. He's just getting such, I mean, usage is basketball, but I guess the snap count, getting such such a high amount of the team's total snaps at running back, as well as in the red zone and in goal line situations, as well as being a pass catching threat. Uh, there's just really no downside. And again, you know, he'll be included in a lot of these, but on this site in particular, while he is kind of I mean, having him being priced between the sixth and the seventh isn't isn't horrible. He probably should be more like fourth or fifth this week, but it's the fact that there is a significant drop off from the sixth price running back in Matt Forte at fifty three hundred, um, and that you know the next running backs you can select as you see and as we go over each week, Fantasy Aces has very tight and close pricing, so you're really looking for the extra blocks where you can pick up more than fifty or a hundred bucks for salary relief, and here you can do that with Latavius over. 
the the other running backs who are still around him on other sites but don't have quite a difference in pricing. Going over to receiver, you can see the gold standard receivers at 6,400. Um, and again, a huge drop off from you know from ODB and Julio. Julio should always be the number one price, so I guess you know play Julio over ODB. Um, but it's a you know four hundred dollar drop off from the top tier to you know AJ Green coming in at your fourth receiver. That same drop off exists from AJ Green to Randall Cobb in pricing, and to some extent in terms of like a dominance factor and just relying on personal memory. Uh, and less numerical stuff. Yeah, these are uh, these are these four receivers are your big, different class of receivers. You can just go up and dominate. And with Calvin Johnson, you know, in the past, those would those would have been the guys up here. Um, so I, I fully understand being drawn to some of those names, but when you realize the way Randall Cobb's been performing, uh, that Devonta might be Devonte might be out um, next week, which again would just give him more targets because Devonte is not actually a good football player. But again, 56, 56, 50, Randall Cobb, it's a good price. Um, it's again, it's less about him being the fifth ranked wide receiver and more about the fifth ranked wide receiver being, you know, as close in price to the ninth ranked or eighth ranked wide receiver as he is the fourth. I just think there's a, there's a pricing savings you're getting here at Randall Cobb. So I've selected him um, going down, you know, Larry Fitzgerald has been, uh, revelation this season so far and defying time and all that, but really it might just be that, hey, if he gets to play with Carson Palmer, he can play till he's 40 and look a lot younger. Um, this is actually a really nice price range. I like Amari Cooper as well, but Keenan Allen's been very boomer bust, and it's funny that the write-ups about him are exactly that. You know, he's been boomer bust and Fitz hasn't. When if, if you want to look, if, getting a little bit logical about things, you know. Fitz had an 11-point game and two multi-touchdown games. Yes, his 11-point game is going to be better than Keenan Allen's low game where he caught, what, one ball or two balls for .6. But Keenan Allen also has two 20-plus point games, and he only had, you know, and he didn't score touchdowns in the first. So the important thing is to realize that when he's targeted and he becomes the game flower, he becomes the man, you know, he's getting a shit ton of targets, 17 and 18 targets. I do not have the numbers in front of me. But those two numbers are probably in the top 10 list of targets through three weeks for every team. If you went in game logs and say, you know, how many guys have, have you know, they, they're just reverse ascending order, if you will, um, for targets received, he would be both in the top 10. So, again, you know, ha had a down week, a better, a better corner on him as well. But someone that I'm not, I'm not going to sleep on because I think he'll be left out. People might go back to Jordan Matthews. Obviously, last week was Darrell Rebus week, so people laid off. The weather might terrify people off of this game, or it could turn out to be a big bust. Again, it is Friday morning, so this this you know Mr. Joaquin coming through is going to affect a lot. But for now, that's why I'm really not looking at Jordan Matthews, and I think Amari Cooper, as a result of Mr. Carr being low priced and and having some weapons and looking good, and going up against the worst team in the NFL and the Chicago Bears. He'll be very high owned and popular as well. Don't really think you can go wrong in this price range uh, from T.Y. Hilton down to Larry Fitzgerald. I really do like them all. And I included uh, you know, another value in James Jones, who's secrets out the box. You know, I guess it was, you know, is he going to be a touchdown specialist? Well, not if he's getting this amount of targets. So certainly someone in, in this price range who's been the most consistent. Though again, fantasy aces, you have tight, you have tight pricing, and all of these guys are liable to have. You know, to have a game that makes them pay off their tag. And this is kind of where I harken back to my Randall Cobb. You know, James Jones is 4,500. Mike Evans is 4,800. So or Alshon, if he plays, is 40. So a couple hundred bucks differentiates, a, you know, a very low value play from some kind of slightly more comfortable middle of the road plays. And that's the same that differentiates your AJ Green from your Randall Cobb or your Demarius from your Cobb. So that's why I, you know, include him in a value article despite it seeming a little bit odd. I'm um, going over to tight end. Tight end is a position that I try to let my roster um, and where I'm at and what I need to do decide because the fact is you're not, there's not, you, you can't pay that much for tight end. I mean, 5,000 um, is your third most expensive tight end and your tight end probably in the best matchup this week that the most people will be on. You're not getting any savings on this site for playing Jordan Reed. You're not getting the crazy discount for playing Charles Clay that exists on other sites. So, the only discount play on this site is really Martellus Bennett, who 
who should always be priced. And this is again, you know, with, with Jimmy Clausen in there and that offense punting every single possession last week and just looking entirely inept. Uh, it, yeah, that, that's why he's lower priced than he should be based on his skill set and based on his usual role. Um, but even him, you're, you know, you're saving, you, you can save some good money off of the Greg Olson, Kelsey, Jimmy Graham range. Uh, and I don't necessarily think you're sacrificing uh, too much talent to do that. But with Jimmy Clausen versus, you know, Jimmy Graham after one game looking slightly comfortable in a few plays with Russell, Travis Kelsey getting targets, you know, getting a shitload of targets, honestly, and Greg Olson having a breakout game when the targets had previously been there, just not the results. I'm looking to actually play one of these three. If you happen to come across a lineup construction or a GPP where this is the price you're left with at this position, you know, or you're even left, I would I would go as far as to say if you're left with, you know, 4,500 to still, you know, go down to Martellus Bennett and not play Ebron or, or Clay or possibly even Efert over him. Um, but that's why he's included because he is the the softest price compared to where I thought it would be at, Kyle Rudolph being the other guy, but he's such a touchdown dependent play. Uh, and he's also going up against my favorite defense of the week, as you see in the Denver Broncos on this site. Uh, as far as defenses go, sure, I look at look at the money, but what I also look at is I just try to rank the four best defenses and see if they're priced accordingly. Um, they actually, Fantasy Aces has it perfectly. Um, in my opinion, it would go Arizona, then Seattle. Then I would slip in Denver at number three, Carolina at number four. Um, and then some of the next ones are negligible um, in the differentiations of them. I like Green Bay more than Buffalo. Uh, I like Buffalo being at home more than Green Bay if it turns out to be really shitty weather. So it's, again, it, little differences, but Cardinals, Seahawks, Panthers, Broncos are typically who I'm going to be including every time. And if they're all the same plot price, I'll go with Arizona or Seattle. If one of those is the cheapest, I will go with them. Or if, you know, Denver or Carolina aren't tied and there is a price break in it, like there is in this case. So again, you know, I don't think that lineup's going to get 186 points. I don't necessarily think it's safe for cash games. I, I'm a little bit to the point where with football and GPPs, you know, anything could be a GPP lineup. So, you know, maybe I'll enter this in the $5. And if you do too, I'll yell at you um, in a lighthearted way and we'll split the money. But I, again, not optimal. I think Carlos Williams is going to be owned. I, it's, I'd have to go site by site, but on this site, he'll be owned 30% at least. On some sites out there, it might be 50. So, uh, differentiate from him if you really want to create a, a different GPP and also differentiate from James Jones being your cheap price as well. Uh, but enough with fantasy aces. Let's not as reluctantly, but still somewhat reluctantly move on to stars draft. Um, and I, you know, again, just having some, some issues with lineup creation um, on the day of Sunday uh, and changing things around, but message me and hopefully things will be okay this week. Starting at quarterback. As you see, the pricing is a lot different than most other sites, though the, the top heaviness is usually only a little bit different and the values are extremely valuable. So a site like this, you have Andrew Luck coming in and Aaron Rodgers coming in above 8K. And I have a phone call coming in, which I will ignore for you wonderful people. Um, Andrew Luck and Aaron Rodgers coming in above 8K. And you do have a tier of quarterbacks then settling in around that 6K mark, a, a little more than 75%, but roughly – um, or yeah, roughly more than 75% of the total of these top guys. And with quarterback, again, you know, it's, it was like that, you know, Tyrod Taylor or any quarterback being $1 or zero fantasy player points on uh, on draft pot. If someone's one fifth of the price of someone else at the quarterback position, which is not possible on these other sites, it's just, you know, hyperbolic, but was true on draft pot, you know, for Aaron Rodgers to do three times as well as anyone else, that other person can't have an 150 yard one touchdown performance or else Rodgers needs three touchdowns in 450. So it's about ratios. Obviously we're not getting two to one ratios at any of these quarterback positions on pretty much any site, but the ratio of, you know, a, of a guy like an Andy Dalton needing 75% of an Aaron Rodgers. Yeah. Obviously Aaron Rodgers almost any week given any opponent is going to outscore Andy Dalton, but the way quarterback points are tabulated with touchdowns only being worth four, with sites not named DraftKings not having 300-yard bonuses, um, sure, they'll score more points and, and may even more often than not score more than 75% more, but it's not as valuable as you think it is because of that ratio. And in this case, you have a guy like Derek Carr who's coming in at the same price as your Jimmy Clausens, your Ryan Mallets, your Luke McCowns, 
And we'll throw in Matthew Stafford, not that he's a poor quarterback, but teams look poor and they're on the road in Seattle. And Brandon Whedon, you know, that that's where Derek Carr is priced. And if he were priced probably around 6,200, um, even with Tyrod, he would still be damn popular, but that would be a, put a decision into people's minds. I don't think on this side too many people are going to have to make that decision. I think Carr is just going to be locked in for a lot of people. Uh, and as you see, th this lineup is not like the previous one. You have 10,900, which is more than you can spend on any single player by a couple grand. Um, so we'll mess with this lineup at the end to soup it up. But for now, looking at the value plays, this is the only site where I haven't included Carlos Williams. I can. He's 4,500. He's most certainly a value, and he's most certainly a better play than Carlos Hyde for 4,800. I just wanted to find the one site where he was priced more appropriately, and there were other people around his range that could you could make do with. Um, and Carlos Hyde, again, um, just someone who I think, if you, if you want to look at his game log, you know, he had that one darling game to start the season. Um, look at the other two game scripts, if you will. I mean, they, they've just been down in these other two games, uh, significantly down, and they've moved away. Yeah, I mean, his, his average rushes haven't been great. He's played some, you know, against Arizona, actually a very good defense. Pittsburgh, not as much, where he performed a little bit better, had a couple receptions. But I just think that this is someone who blew up week one. Everyone jumped to week two, was disappointed. Horrible matchup week three. And as a result of a matchup being bad after a blow up week and not performing, I think he's completely off every single person's radar. Um and I don't think it's the worst of matchups out there. It might not be, it's, you know, not ideal. And he could easily fall into that same game script again. Um, so again, I can't, he's kind of included as a GPP play because he's priced with, you know, Alfred Blue, Thomas Rawls, who we'll talk about on another site. Um, but as I'm, as I'm looking back and if I'm, if I'm really being less GP, less kind of trying to create differentiation and just giving you the nuts and bolts of what this video is, I'd probably move to having Joseph Randall in here over him. Again, I'm not, not going to bite the bullet and put Carlos Williams in quite yet, but um, you know that this price range is, is soft and has a lot of starting running backs that should be getting a chunk. Melvin Gordon will explode at some point this season in a game. I, I like to think that this is the game for it with Cleveland's deep rush defense. He just doesn't get enough of his team's total carries, again, to be a, a better, safer floor higher ceiling play than Carlos Williams, who's, who's probably safer and safer floor, higher ceiling. I'm just <laughs> continuing to mention him to cover myself. These two guys, um, Joseph Randall, actually looking at it again, I'll probably try to work in more than at first. Look, Melvin Gordon, people are circling him a bit. Um, I haven't looked around the industry, but I heard someone mention him on a show the other day. And it's probably matchup based is, you know, you see Cleveland pop up on the schedule. Who's the running back going against them? Oh, this week we don't have someone getting 90 percent of the team's carries. Uh, well, maybe this will and kind of taking it as the logical. Well, maybe then this will be his breakout week. But I think people will be on that line of thought. And you should be aware of it, too. Uh, again, you know, if you want to use your flex on running backs on a non PPR, um, Carlos Williams, you have over here. Um, Ryan Matthews, if, if DeMarco Murray news um, and weather news would push him into more of my lineups. So, again, check back. But uh, Carlos Williams will definitely be in the majority of my lineups, and we'll create a lineup with him in a moment. But for now, as we move on to wide receiver, and you see Moncrief coming in at 5K, been a sleeper for or a sleeper price play for these last few weeks, and almost everyone's been on him. Not quite as much of that deep sleeper this week in that he's passed a couple people, uh, and notable people in terms of pricing in that he's now past Jeremy Macklin and is even with Allen Robinson. I think he might have been even with Allen Robinson last week on a site or two, um, but slowly upticking in price. Not enough on, on Star's draft to, to have me off him. Um, Allen Robinson's the other guy I consider just slotting in for this video. Um, but worth pointing out that, you know, Vontae Davis will, will be matched up with him, so perhaps there's some issues. And I've even read that, and as a Colts fan, know that, you know, number two is a number three is going up against the Colts have, a lot of success as receivers. Um, it's just that Jacksonville doesn't really have any healthy number twos or number threes. So the thing to look at this week is the health of Al and Alan Hearns. I don't think Marcus Lee has been practicing at all this season or, or played, but I could be wrong. Um, so looking at those kind of things, Alan Robinson's not a bad play, but not understanding the matchup deep enough will is probably why his percentage will be slightly lower than you, lower than you'd imagine it. I like Macklin at four nine. Don't even hate the matchup. 
uh, just think an explosion in price usually, or explosion in performance means more people are aware of you. And we're also dealing with the fact that this is the site that has James Jones just disrespected with his price tag of 3,700. Uh, he's priced the same as Nelson Aguilar, who's done absolutely nothing. Uh, and, you know, <laughs> Andre Johnson, who who will break out. He'll have a two touchdown, 95 to 115 yard game this season. Yeah, you know, one or two of them, and then still find a way to average less than four, four or five catches a game for less than 50 yards. Um, so at this price range right now, James Jones is both producing and it's also getting targets. I mean, game one and game two, it, he's had touchdowns every game. Uh, and they've been the majority of his score. What was nice was to see this week with Devontae out and on the sidelines was him still getting eight targets, uh, doubling up his targets in previous weeks. So showing that he may be more than just a red zone threat in this offense. Um, and now, <laughs> now I'll move to tight end. Um, this isn't necessarily what I will recommend, but tight ends on Stars Draft are almost always priced below 5K. Um, so for here, what I've just shown you is if you select the number one price tight end in a Greg Olson, you're still paying less than you would for a, a Moncrief and tight ends. You know, they they function like receivers. They're going to receive the football and not really run the football. So their price range relative to receivers, if you understand their role in their offenses, is a good way to gauge their overall value and whether you should be considering using them in the flex. So when you look at something like Greg Olson being your most expensive at 49, what that means to me is two things. One, I jumped straight to the receivers and, you know, took me to that Moncrief range. And yeah, I think that if Greg Olson were listed as a wide receiver, I would consider playing him this week. As a result, I almost certainly want him in my lineups as a tight end or a flex. Um, looking at looking at the flex, I've also included two other tight ends because it's kind of the same thing for me. I look at a Travis Kelsey at 4,500, um, and I look at someone that's going to be priced more than you know receivers at 4,500 on on this site on most other sites. I'm looking at let's see, guys like Golden Tate and Percy Harvin would usually come in cheaper than Kelsey. Uh, also looking at like a Carlos Williams, who again, I've mentioned now 20, 30 times in this video, uh, is 4,500. And even with his role, I would say that Kelsey is like a fair play over him. So playing tight ends on this site um, when they're priced the way they are and just trying to find the best, it's, it's less positional value, or sorry, it's less their position should lead you to playing them in the flex and more just double checking which positions um, how, how positions are priced against one another, specifically with an edge to tight ends. And as you'll see, you know, if you have confidence in that Philly Washington game getting played and, and adverse conditions not messing up too much, uh, and even you know tight ends and short plays, you know Jordan Reed at 3,300 is a joke um, as his price tag. You have Kobe Fleener at 2,700. I just want to go through the tight end. You have Barnage at 2,700, Donald at 2,800, Rudolph at 2,900, Clay at 3,000. Uh, and even if you want to take it one step further, if you want to play Jimmy Graham, this is the site to play Jimmy Graham on in that Jimmy Graham is the third most expensive tight end, not the most expensive, and he's cheaper than every single, I believe, let me double check, but I believe Jimmy Graham is cheaper than every single starting running back, um, with the exception, I guess, of Chris Johnson, 41, 100 different. So again, it's ratios, it's figuring out that kind of stuff. Um, we'll jump through because there's so much money left over. Kind of what where would be the spots i would look at i'll put in carlos uh again not for gpps but we'll put him in because he is a better play than melvin gordon um and if i were messing around with this you know i might say and here aj's a little closer in price and I'm sorry, I have I didn't mention that. I have the Broncos in his defense. Um, on this site, you're playing the Broncos defense. Sorry, you don't have a choice. You are playing. You, listener, you're playing the Broncos defense. As you see, the Broncos defense is $800 more than the cheapest defense of the Redskins, which puts it in the bottom 10 defense. Or one, two, three. My math's going to be wrong. Isn't it six, eight, ten? It does not. It puts them as the 11th cheapest defense. Um, 800 more than the cheapest. <laughs> 2,400 cheaper than the most expensive. The Seahawks are almost double the cost of the Broncos. Seahawks are borderline unplayable on this website. Again, go through what I was, you know, Seahawks, Cardinals, Panthers, Broncos. I see that the Cardinals are a significant discount. The Broncos are an absurd discount. That's where I'm going to go. Um, I have 2,000 left. So if I wanted to right now, I could soup up this team just by increasing my defense. I actually think the Broncos have a have a better than one in 10 shot at being the, the number one scoring defense in the week. So I will pick a tight end in this case to get rid of. Let's, I will leave Jimmy in for now and see what we get at seven one. 
you get a Calvin, which isn't ideal. You get a Demarius. You get a workhorse. So yeah, th this might be what a what a cash game. I don't know what a cash game stars draft lineup looks like. Yeah, Derek Carr. I'll read it off if you have it. You know, I'll try to zoom in. But you know, Derek Carr, Joseph Randall, Carlos Williams, Julio Jones, Randall Cobb, Greg Olson, Jimmy Graham, Jamal Charles, and the Broncos. Being honest with you, Jimmy Graham probably wouldn't make my lineup. Um, just wanted to show you, again, this is a value video, that this is the best value you're going to get on him on any site. Moving on to Fantasy Draft. They actually have a little bit tighter pricing this week. Um, going through the quarterback position, I didn't really find any huge values I liked. Um, Carr, again, is, is kind of the popular play, and I'll, I'll throw him in. He just happened to be this, I believe, um, let's see. Yeah, it was just that he wasn't priced exactly the same as some of these lower guys and that it isn't so expensive to go to and well, someone that I like in Andy Dalton. Um, but it's also about Cam Newton just not being priced. And again, I, I, this is a personal lean. I, I love Cam Newton. I think the ability to to run and score with your legs and in, in any weather, uh, in any situation, is it's just such an advantage of the quarterback position where when you couple the fact that he just basically has uh, you know, men off the street playing receiver for him. Uh, he he controls a lot more of the offense, and I'm confident in his ability to be Superman at times. So, again, this is more of a – not a homer play, but more of a, a man crush play on his football abilities. Um, if you were – again, if you really want to play value, you know, I try to vary these videos so you're not getting the same guys, but it probably is David Carr – or Derek Carr, not David Carr. Um, again, Carlos Williams, can't ignore the price. Latavius, Melly, Latavius Murray is in the first video, um, is priced up, is not priced up as the fifth or sixth receiver. In this case, he's priced more like the ninth receiver. Oh, I got that right counting. Well done. Uh, and as a result, you know, I want his inclusion. Um, again, this is not a lineup for your, a, a lineup ready to go. Michael Crabtree, the secondary receiver for Derek Carr, who's getting a shit ton of targets, is only 9,000. So I've included him. Uh, that's a price range that I actually like for receiver this week or not for receiver for flex this week sorry we'll get back to that in a second uh it's a it's a position that for receiver he's you know stevie johnson's another name but everyone below them i'm pretty much avoiding uh i don't i don't really see again hearns it's a it's an injury thing um you can play the leonard hankerson roddy white game a little bit but since i'm going to be on julio jones i'll probably avoid it uh, marvin jones is the other name to mention just because um you know, I believe Sean Smith's back this week from suspension, so he'll be covering AJ Green. Not that anyone can actually, you know, shut him down or do that, but uh, may have may have continued opportunities in the coming weeks or in in this coming week. Randall Cobb at fourteen two. Again, it's similar to fantasy aces. It's a price range thing. I don't think he should be below Calvin Johnson um, or necessarily Emmanuel Sanders. And there's a five hundred. Drop off from Calvin and 800 drop off from Sanders. So it's a price point thing. It really dips to 14.2. Again, you know, the same differentiation between him and a Keenan Allen isn't enough to get you up from him to AJ Green. And I feel more confident um, in, in that difference. So from a price standpoint, while it doesn't appear like value, just like on Aces, I still look at him as a value for the price. Um, and again, Moncrief, who's going to come up in all these videos. And who's you know it's worthwhile to remember that his scoring has been touchdown based so far, but he's coming in at less than James Jones. Last video he came in you know even with Allen Robinson, but significantly more than James Jones. And I went into why I like him more than Allen in this matchup, even though I think Allen is a good play uh, because of his relation to James Jones. It's, you know he he should be more expensive. He isn't. This is a good site for him. Tight end. Uh, we're not sure about Sammy Watkins, so that right now Charles Clay's value might be a little bit higher. But again, it's about a drop off in price. He's going to be most people's somewhere between you know seventh to tenth tight end this week, and that's where he comes in on pricing. But there again, after you get your Jason Witten's, Tyler Eifert's, Martellus Bennett's, and Jordan Reed's, who are all within 500 of each other, who are in the, in their own right, there are they are their own tier, and that it takes 900 to get up to this next tier. And there's only seven. So, you know, you have a tier of Jimmy Graham, Olsen, and Kelsey. Secondary tier of Eford, Witten, Bennett, and Reed. 
Uh, and then you have another tier, but this tier drops down even you know, more significantly than tier one to tier two, dropping down 1,400 from the low man and 1,800 from the top man to Charles Clay, um, Eric Ebron, Rudolph, and Fleener. So those guys are your third tier. And here, that you know, I'm rhyming, but here that tier uh, is is uh, jacked up according to what I just did. But this the tier is is fairly valuable. So um, we'll wait for this to load back up. I do that every week, uh, and it did. Uh, the other thing is Ty Montgomery. If Devonte is out, he's coming in at mid. I think min price is six. I don't know if anyone can be cheaper than six. So now min price is six. He comes in at six, and he's going to be getting opportunity. So. Keep an eye on that situation in Green Bay, but you know, same with Philip Dorsett for the Colts. Um, again, there's no injury there that's playing part. It's just spreading the ball around some uh, a bunch, um, and he you know has has eh, not really done much last week. He had a better week. It's not in the game logs, uh, but someone to consider again more more a tournament. And as I've went on at length, let me remind you that Fantasy Draft is the single best. Skill game, a GPP site in the industry with 20 game lim 20 entry limits at most or fewer entry limits uh, for every single contest. So if you want to play your Philip Dorsett or your Ty Montgomery 6,000, you know, in a GPP lineup to then have tons of studs that no one else can afford, uh, there may be less people doing that on a site where you have to basically make that 5% of your lineups. Whereas on DraftKings, if someone's making 500, they can make three Ty Montgomery lineups, and it's not even a percent. Um, the other guys to mention, talking GPP and cheap, if you went the Cam route, I kind of said that he has some guys off the street as receivers. Those guys are Corey Brown. Corey, you know, for shame, you were Philly Brown. You were the man. I don't know why you went back to Corey, but you need to change that. Uh, you, were, I, I loved you. I don't know what happened. The other one being Ted Ginn. Those are his two receivers. You've got a 7-1 and a 6-9 starting receiver. Not height, mind you, because they're small guys. Um, price. And that's just absurd with cap relief. So if you think he's going to throw and, and do some things, you could create a stack with him. And as you're looking at the pricing and looking at how much is left, even with the names you see on the screen, um, you can really do some damage with that stack. And then going to defenses, I, I've included Denver. It's not the same necessity as the other sites. They have it right. They have Seahawks, Arizona, Carolina, and Denver is for the top five. Actually, they have Buffalo in there too. So they have all five of mine. My favorite defenses, priced as the five best. Um, so you let your roster creation and where you're at pricing-wise determine where you want to be at. Trying to look at a value D on a site like this, if you found one in the 47 to 5,000 range, it could be valuable. There isn't too much of a price break, and none of the defenses that drop down um, are that valuable the way that we just found Denver for 2,800 on the previous site. Again, building this up into looking into something more respectable. I mean, these two running backs are just going to be so highly owned on every single site. Cash games, I don't think that means you don't have to play them. Again, the idea of cash games to me of, of, of playing the chalk is fine so long as you're playing the best of the chalk because in a sport like football, there is there are, there are you know five or six chalky running backs, 10 chalky receivers, so it's about being on the right side of the percentages. Um, if I'm going to play Lat Murray and Derek Carr or Crabtree and Carr, you know, in this case, we'll get rid of Murray. Um, not that I will would necessarily recommend doing that, but we'll get rid of Murray. We'll play, uh, and again, it's just that there aren't great. The top running backs aren't in great matchups this week, so you know we won't get rid of Murray. If we want to add a running back, we'll do that in the flex, and we'll get rid of Carr because I think while he's cheap and while he is a great value, a lot of people will be on him and lead them to somewhat similar lineups. We'll go back to that Cam Newton um, pool. We'll make a Cam Newton Olson lineup. As you can see, you know, we have Cam Newton, we have Olsen, we have the two most popular running backs, we have probably the third or fourth most popular receiver, and now what we basically have is a bunch of cheap crap receivers and not, not much money for that slot. But if you, if you want to play one of those guys at the 6K, or if you want to just you know, honestly play Latavius with Michael Crabtree, we're doing it for the price range, you can just as easily flip in Stevie, not a huge, you know, not a huge plus EV move to add a running back to a receiver, but as I discussed with Benny last week on air, um, the idea of not having either playing a quarterback without a stack or playing two players on a quarterback's team without the quarterback, either two receivers or a running back and receiver, you're creating such a difference 
um, from other rosters in terms of you will almost always have a unique roster. The majority of rosters that include a quarterback will include at least one player with him. Almost every single, again, the majority of lineups you see with multiple players from a team will then be paired with their quarterback. So to, to do something like this, to do a Crabtree or a Murray, or as we were discussing on air last week, do a Tom Brady without his teammates, uh, really creates a difference amongst the field, even if they're on the same game as you. And last week it really worked out. I mean, I think Tom Brady hit value, you know, didn't exceed value by much, you know, two. And I, I mentioned that if he snuck one in, he would, he would really tear it up. And sure enough, you know, I believe Blunt had two one yard touchdowns. So it didn't work out in that play. Still exceeded 22 points, and more importantly, every single player on his team was just a little bit under value. So that not so if you played Brady and no one with him, all the other people that played Brady with one or two or three people with him were in situation were negative situations against you going forward. So uh, and I you know shout out to Benny for for you know coming in second and, and having that nice payday, uh, utilizing Andy Dalton, and he went the other route I believe going backwards where. He came to a price point that he finished up, like his roster and selected quarterback last. So he wasn't, again, he wasn't considering correlation as a necessity. Uh, Might have worked out if there was a quarterback that was in that price range, but it's not something you need to do. So I'm going to leave it like as is with, with Crabtree and Latavius, just as a GPP lineup, and I will enter it. Um, now we're looking at flex. No. Yes, going Amari Cooper would be a little bit too much, only because if you're going three and all three hit value, um, you're talking about it would be very damn hard for, a, I, again, you could, it could have a situation where it occurs, but not with Derek Carr's price, where Derek Carr would most certainly hit value and exceed it if all three of the guys. So I, three, I wouldn't do. Two, I, I very much am fine with doing. And especially, I mean, three you could consider doing um, with a, with an expensive quarterback and not including the quarterback, but just just not with Carr. So again, trying to trying to spruce this up, make this look a little bit nicer. You see that you know Devonta comes in at a discount this week. If he's healthy and he's going to be a workhorse again, he had 30 touches last week, or maybe uh, maybe more with with receptions, 30 carries last week. James Jones is at that same price again. Not going to be playing James Jones on here if he's the same price as someone like Devonta, same price as Allen Robinson. And I can pay 200 more to have a Travis Kelsey or less to have the Moncrief. Um, and where this leaves us, again, you know, leaves us in a Fitzgerald range. So if I were souping up and, and leaving some values in, uh, it's okay to leave. I, I would probably, it's going to seem absurd to say, but I would say most lineups should have an Oakland Raider in them this week. As much about their resurgence as a little not resurgence, you know, in terms of the ability to move the ball on offense, not be a great complete football team, but the fact that they're playing Chicago as well. So uh, this this wouldn't this would look like an interesting uh, GPP lineup. You have your Cam Newton, Greg Olson correlation, which is going to be a high correlation with Cam, so non-ideal. You have the most two popular running backs that are going to be on this week on every site and probably this site as well. Uh, on your roster, I think your differentiation in this in terms of a GPP lineup is having two Raiders who aren't paired with their quarterback. So again, you know, this is just a way to fill cap and kind of a spoiler of showing in other guys who I think are valued at their price ranges. And this apologize video is going on very long today. We'll switch over to Fantasy Feud. Fantasy Feud where it tends to be very hard to find value. Start at quarterback. Again, you have the creation of a you know, Aaron Rodgers on his own tier. Um, the difference between Aaron Rodgers and the number two quarterback of the week is the same difference as between Andy Dalton and uh, like Teddy Bridgewater, between Bridgewater and Bortles. So it's obscene. I won't. This is one site where I won't be paying up ever, ever for that top quarterback when when tiers like that exist and drop downs. Um, I think that you have three guys in a row who are I guess three three guys out of four who I like in a price range. Uh, it's Andy Dalton, it's Derek Carr yet again. Uh, and and Tyrod, but Tyrod again, he's in order with them. You have four guys in a row separated by two thousand dollars. Tyrod to jump up is an additional five point math, <laughs> five point six. Okay, so it's the price jump there that makes him less of a relative value, even though in his positioning in it, you might say, okay, you know, he's the somewhere around the you know, the ninth or eighth price. That's where I'm comfortable, so I'll play him. Yeah, but the ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth guys are all closer together than any of them are to Tyrod. 
So again, I, I use that as an example of how I look at pricing before. And then also the drop downs, because this tier that I like has a significant drop down after it. I just don't really trust Winston, Bradford, Smith, any of these guys um, on a site where the pricing is as such. And you're you're forced to basically spend 100K on quarterback. So your guys, you know, your guys who are hurt are going to cost 100K. Um, and you're other than your top guy, everyone else is 143K. So it's a really close range, similar to aces. Uh, but unlike aces, there's less value. It's it's less soft. Carlos Williams, again, going to, you know, get, have him in there on the left. Yeah, ha and more so on this site, you just have to have him. Uh, if you want to go through, you got two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. He's the 19th priced running back. Got to play him at that. Just have to. Um, and, and the amount of money that you're saving, I mean, Eight, what is he? Eighty, eighty-six thousand and and one hundred dollars. Um, and what is uh top price guy is where are we at? Like one one fifty, one forty, no one forty-five, six hundred. So you know, just just using those numbers, that's roughly it might be slightly under, but roughly sixty percent of his salary to jump up. Uh, and I don't think you're going to expect anyone to outperform a starting running back in a good role. Not that they won't, but you're going to be able to pick that name out of the hat. One point six times. It's it's a tall order. I think on this site, you just include Carlos and you keep going and, and understand that he's going to be over 50% owned here. Um, continuing, I have Melvin Gordon again, like we did on Stars Draft. It's, again, it's, a, it's an idea of where he's priced at. I also like Carlos Hyde a little bit here. Um, but again, running backs are very expensive. Devontae's fine priced. Latavius, the guys that we think are popular, they're priced where they should be. And I think the selection of, of Melvin Gordon on the left is more about me expecting him. And it's negligible. It's more about me expecting him to be 108 to 110K compared to how he is on most of these sites. And he's a little bit under. But I would have no problem with, you know, taking him off and going more expensive with Devonta or taking him off and going up to Murray or, as I alluded to, taking him off and going down to Hyde, which is where we'll leave it because this is value. Um, so, and I, uh, oops. We'll leave it at Carlos and Carlos and Carlos as our value running backs. Looking at receiver, uh, T.Y. Hilton doesn't have a touchdown yet this season. As a result, his points per game is down. His dollars have dropped. Uh, just way too much for a man of his talents on this side. He should not. It should not be T.Y. Hilton and then James Jones. T.Y. Hilton should not be behind Moncrief. T.Y. Hilton should not probably be behind Allen Robinson either. Should be priced more at 120. He isn't. Simply put, you know, I'm not going to get into matchup or anything about this game. Just he is underpriced for a, a number one receiver who hasn't been performing like it uh, and fairly fair enough to dismiss him on some some other sites alongside the names he's priced with. He's just too underpriced here. So put T.Y. Hilton in your lineups for value. Uh, Michael Crabtree, who we've talked about on other sites, is a good value here. The guy who comes in who really intrigues me on here uh, is, just, is Brandon Cooks. I have no idea how his health is going to be going forward or if there is, oh, is there any information on those uh, isn't ideal but someone just intrigues me to to keep stock not to play this week keep stock in him keep track of what he's doing he's someone that going into the season was ranked like a, the 10th overall receiver in, and this isn't full ppr but still uh ranked the top guy and his price just dropping every week obviously breeze was out last week is probably out again maybe back next but keep an eye watch his price bottom out if he doesn't perform this week so that you can snatch him in this range or lower in the future. Um, but for now, I'd, I'd rather have just, just Crabtree um, for consistency and targets. And again, oh, the other name I've included is Alshon Jeffrey. And he's the one that reminded me, again, if he plays, not an ideal, I, I'm not gonna not play Alshon Jeffrey for 80,000, for, for less than Michael Crabtree, for less than Percy Harvin and John Crabtree. You know, Again, it's a bottoming out of a price tag like T.Y. Hilton as a result of injury or as a result of just uh, performing poorly. And when you see guys coming back for the first time, that's your only chance to get them at that price. Now, with Mike Evans, it didn't work out. I mean, and I think that, you know, he played maybe 60%, I'm guessing, of, of snaps without getting a reception. Uh, and then, you know, two weeks later, he's priced up to 109, 400. So <laughs> it's tough. Um, you kind of, with, with players coming back from things, you just want to be 
just want to be on it uh, at when when there's value to be had. Last week, as you saw, Crabtree got seven seven receptions, 100 yards in the previous week, zero. Um, so again, if you think that the Brandon Cooks week or this week for Alshon is the zero week when they're priced low, you know, by all means, fade them. You know, most people won't be on them, but that's also the time when you can get the value that no one else is really on, waiting for them to show something so they feel confident. And in this case, Alshon will never be 80,200 on Fantasy View, probably as soon as he catches one ball. He could go one ball for two yards next week, and his price will probably come back as a result of him being able to health, in full health, make it through a football game. Uh, going to defense, as you can see, I have Carolina selected for the first time in this video. And again, by nature of them being uh, top five defenses, Fantasy Feud killed it, exactly the right defenses. Um, so you can play any of them. It comes down to pricing, and each of them are a couple thousand different. Uh, again, I is Carolina 20%? Should they be 20% less than Seattle? No. That's why I've included them. Should they be, you know, 12 to 15% less than Arizona? Well, actually, that's yeah, that, that's where I have them. So in terms of my value system, fantasy points per dollar, they're equal, but they're the cheaper ones, so they're the value here. So that's who I've uh whoop, that's who I've loaded in. And uh, I am now just realizing that I didn't feel that extra flex and uh apologize. But uh, yeah, that, that'll be it for today. I'll switch off this. Actually, we'll give you a bonus today, but I'll, I'll switch off it anyway. Having some computer drama. Stop. All right, so I, I apologize. Last week, I forgot on Draft Pot um, to post. So I'm going to load up Draft Pot this week. I may, I may have, and you know, it pains me to give them away, but uh, whatever. I, I may have stumbled across as something that I consider, you know, the, the semi nuts on draft pot this week, which only means that it's going to crash and burn. But I'll just share it with you. Um, because hey, if people want to listen, you know, every once in a while we'll give you some nuggets. So here, yeah, oh, I don't know. Oh, I guess I. Uh, Oh, you've been you've been seeing me. Okay, let me get these off so I can see better up close. Screen share one more time. Get your app caught up on here. <laughs> I'll just let you show. I won't go through prices. Won't go through anything. Just to get you excited about playing fantasy football on draft pot in a salary cap style game. Here would be my lineup on the right: Tyrod Taylor, Latavius Murray, Dots Freeman, Julio Jones, Odell Beckham. T.Y. Hilton, Greg Olson, Joseph Randall, Adrian Peterson, the Seattle Seahawks D, and Brandon McManus. Uh, and actually, that I only pointed that out and wanted to bring it up this week because, yeah, it looks like the nuts, and it's a damn good lineup as of now, in my opinion. But it also was the first time I came pretty damn close to actually zeroing out a, uh, a lineup. And in, in case you were wondering, you know, what, what that means, it's a term I've used. Having zero dollars left, obviously, with the way pricing is on here, it's going to be damn damn hard to do it. You're almost going to have to select a player because you're trying to do it. But one thing that's interesting about playing on a site like DraftPod in a week like this, it's the first week where their backwards price, not backwards, sorry, where their unique pricing um, is going to create interesting decisions because you have a guy like Carlos Williams who's double the price of Latavius Murray. So you may have people who are just typing in Carlos on the site. And again, you can almost make your team any way you want on here. You can take a really cheap defense and kicker and then be able to go up from a mid receiver to a Julio Jones. So you, you want to do things like that. Um, but I'm very intrigued to see what Carlos Williams percentage is on draft pot. If it's anything over 10%, I'm calling it, you know, a fish play and that there is, you know, EV edge when someone is overpriced on this site. But again, you know, a fun place to play. Wanted to share you share you that lineup, and I'll remember to go and break it down in the forums, and we'll talk about who the value plays are that allowed me. Obviously, you can see on here that you know Tyrod and Devonta, Latavius, Joseph Randall, McManus. Those are all you know sub ten dollar sub sub ten DPPG guys, uh, and would be values. But I'm intrigued to see if you guys have any more. Um,